All right, whenever you're ready, Mr. Lally. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Could you uh, please state your name and, and spell your last name for the jury? Julie Albert, A-L-B-E-R-T. And uh, where do you live now? I live at 22 Maple Street in Canton. And uh, how long have you lived with you? A little over two years. And uh, how long in total have you lived in Canton? My whole life, uh, 48 years. And where did you live uh, just prior to living on Maple? I lived at Seven Meadows Avenue in Canton. And how long a uh, period of time did you live at Seven Meadows Avenue? Oh, um, 20, 15 plus, 20 years, about 20 years. And um, do you have kids? Yes, I have three boys. And uh, are you married? Yes, I am. What's your husband's name? Christopher Albert. And uh, your three boys, how old are you? Um, my oldest, Christopher, is 25. My second son, Colin, is 20. And my youngest son, Dylan, is 16. And uh, do each of them, um, where, where do they live? Do they live with you? They all live with me, yes. And uh, your husband, does he work? Yes. What does he do? He owns a restaurant in Canton. What's the name of the restaurant? D&E Pizza. And where is that located? 618 Washington Street. Now, when you lived on Meadows Avenue, can you describe to the jury sort of, if you know, about how many houses were on Meadows? I would say maybe eight on each side. And Meadows comes out to a main road, is that correct? Yes, Pleasant Street. Okay. And um, while you were living on Meadows Avenue, did you have occasion to come to know someone by the name of John Oakey? Yes, I did. And where did John live in relation to you? Um, John's house was at the top of the street, and there's two houses. there was two houses between John's house and my house. And if you recall, about how long did you know John O'Keefe, or when did he move into that house? I think he moved in in 2017-ish, maybe. And I've probably known him since maybe 2019. And how would you describe sort of your relationship with John? We were friendly. Um, we were neighbors. You know, I'd see him all the time coming in and out of the street because he's at the top of the street when I pulled out of the street. And um, we were friendly. And in addition to you knowing Mr. O'Keefe, mm -hmm. were there other sort of people that, uh, that knew you that also knew him? Yes. Yes. Who, who were some of those people? Um, well, I know I knew John through Jennifer McCabe. And who is Jennifer McCabe? Uh, um, she's one of my closest friends. Now, <clears throat> you knew that John had uh, two children that he was uh, guardian for? Yes. Um, and you were familiar with both his niece and his nephew? Yes. Them. Now, at some point um, through Mr. O'Keefe, did you come to know somebody by the name of Karen? Yes. When about was it that you met Ms. Reed? Um, maybe in like 2021, like, you know, pulling in and out of the street if they were outside, if, you know, a couple times out socially, probably in 2021, I would say. Um, and if you could, just uh, so we're clear, uh, do you see Ms. Reed in the courtroom? Yes, between her lawyers right over there. That's a record of like that identification okay. by the witness. Now, <clears throat> on some social occasions that you were talking about, when you would see them out, would you see, uh, would you have occasion to socially interact with Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed? Yes. Is that something that like you and your husband did together, or was it more of a group setting type? No, a group setting. And with reference to, uh, did you have occasions where you would socially? hang out or interact with Mr. O'Keefe in which Ms. Reed wasn't there? Um, I can only honestly remember one time, and that was, I don't even know if they were together at the time. And had you ever socially interacted or, or spent time with Ms. Reed separate and apart from Mr. O'Keefe? No. Now, if I could turn your attention to January 28th, uh, 2022. Do you recall that day? Yes. Do you recall what day of the week it was? Um, Friday. And uh, what, if anything, did you have uh, plans for that particular evening? 
Um, the next day was my nephew's birthday. So we were all, a bunch of us were going to go out that night, um, the night before, to um, a bar in Canton. By the night before, you mean the night before his birthday? Yes. And that nephew, um, what, what was that nephew's name? Brian. Brian Jr. And if you know about how old was he turning or how, well, let me start with this. How old is he now? Um, he's 24. Um, so just turned 24 a few months ago? January, yep. And so he would have been turning, what, 22 at that point? Yes. Um, you know, we say we had plans to sort of go out. Who was, who was the we? Um, myself, my, his mother, Nicole. My niece, Caitlin, um, and a couple of Brian's friends. Now, and you mean Brian Jr.'s friends? Yes. And so Brian Albert Jr. has a mother named Nicole Albert, is that correct? Yes. And uh, how is uh, she sort of, how is she related to you? Um, she's my sister-in-law. Our husband's a brother. Um, so your husband, Christopher, has a brother? Brian. Brian, okay. And that would be sort of Brian. Brian Sr., for lack yep. Of a better term. Yep. Um, your husband, Christopher, how many siblings does he have? Six. And Brian is the oldest? The that? oldest, yes. And so there were plans to go out that evening, the day before Brian Albert Jr.'s birthday, correct? Yes. And uh, what were the plans? What did they sort of consist of? Um, we were just going to go to Waterfall. And is Waterfall? Uh, it's, it's, it's a bar in Canton on Washington Street. And from your husband's pizza shop at the to the waterfall, about how far away are the two from each other? Um, very close. I mean, 200 steps, maybe. You can, very, very close. Um, same side of the street or opposite? No, opposite sides. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when it came to that day, um, where did you go? Did you go to the waterfall first or somewhere else or if you know? I went to my sister-in-law, Nicole's house, to pick her up. And do you know uh, the address where your sister-in-law and your brother-in-law live? 34 Fairview, where they live, 34 Fairview Road. Um, and that was somewhere that you had been numerous occasions before? Yes. And when you arrived at uh, 34 Fairview Road, uh, you went inside the house? I think I went inside for a moment, yeah, just to wait. And do you know who, if anyone, did you see in there that you knew or recognized or, or didn't? Um, I know my, my niece, Caitlin, was in there, my nephew, Brian. I don't, I think, I don't recall. I, I don't recall who else was in there. Your sister-in-law, Nicole, was she there? Yeah, she was ready to leave. Okay. Yep. And um, when you left, I'm mm -hmm. sort of you in the plural. So you drove, is that correct? I drove. Yep. And uh, who, if anyone, went along with you in your car? Um, Nicole, my sister-in-law, and Caitlin, my niece. And Brian did not end up coming with us. And so your nephew, Brian, for whom you had initially made the plans to go yep. out to celebrate, didn't end up coming? <clears throat> Correct. And uh, why was that? I don't, he just, I don't think he was failing up to it. And uh, if you know about what time was it that you picked your sister-in-law and your niece up and then went to work? I would... I don't remember exactly, but I would probably say between maybe 7.30 and 8, 7.30, like around 7.30 maybe. And uh, you arrive at the waterfall, you go in. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could just um, explain for the jury sort of when you walk into the, the door of the waterfall, where was it that, that the three of you went? When you walk into the door, there's a couple high top tables, long high top tables in front of you. And we just sat down at a high top table right when you walk through the door. Now, from your experience either that evening or prior evenings uh, on certain nights, does the waterfall have any kind of sort of entertainment? Yeah, they always have. Um, every week's different. They have bands. And from your recollection, was there a band there that night? Yes, there was. And do you recall where you were seated in relation to the band? Um, I was sitting at the end of the high top table closest to the door that you walk in, and the band was to the right of me against a wall and kind of like an alcove, like a little against the wall. And when you went there, was the band already sort of set up and playing or, or did that happen later? I think they set up while we were there. 
I think. And so initially when you go there, do you go there and just have drinks or did you eat something or what? what? We ate and yeah. And while you were there, as far as um, during sort of the meal portion of it, was there anyone else that joined you? I know my um, <coughs> niece's boyfriend, Tristan Morris, came. I don't remember exactly when it was during that, but I know he was there. And then during the meal part, I don't, um, I don't think during the meal part, anyone else, I, I don't think. So you recall as far as the meal part was concerned, it's you, your sister-in-law, Nicole, your niece, Caitlin, and her boyfriend, Tristan Morris. Correct. And uh, Ms. Morris, did he stay for any extended period of time, or, or when was it that he left? The- I know he stayed for a little bit, but I honestly can't remember what time exactly he left. Now... Your husband, was he working on that day? Yes, he was. And um, had you been in communication with him as to where you were going to be? Yes. And so the plan was basically for him to meet you at the waterfall when he was done with work. Correct, yes. And if you know about what time was it that your husband, uh, Christopher, came over to the waterfall? Maybe not 9.30, 10, I, maybe. I don't remember I don't exactly. Yes, just yeah. you know approximate time. Yeah. Um, so at some time around 9.30 or so, your husband Christopher comes over to the waterfall? Yes. And uh, what, if anything, do, did he do when he got there? I he came asked, in. Yeah. He came in. Did he get anything to eat, anything to drink? I'm sh- yeah. He prob- probably ordered a drink and just stood by the table, I would think. And... Um, you and the people in your group, were you drinking that night? Yes. What, what is it? Do you recall specifically what you had to drink? Um, I think I had just a couple glasses of wine. And uh, your husband, what is he? Do you recall specifically what he had that night? What he would drink is Miller Lite. Okay. And that's sort of typically what he would drink yes. when he was out? Yes. Okay. And uh, your sister-in-law, Nicole, uh, do you recall what she was drinking? I would assume White Claw, a White Claw. And uh, same question with regard to your niece, Kate. Yes, probably White Claw as well. Now, while um, while you were there, who, if any, um, so after your husband came in, mm-hmm. who, if anyone else, sort of came in and joined uh, the group that you were with? Um, my brother-in-law, Brian Albert, and his friend, Brian Higgins. And obviously, you know your brother-in-law, Brian Albert, correct? Mm-hmm. And Is that uh, yes? you know. Yes. Thank you, Nathan. Um, You just have to answer audibly. So, did you know Mr. Higgins as well? Yes. And how did you know Mr. Higgins? I just know him from being friends with my brother-in-law. Uh, so, you knew him just sort of through your brother-in-law, Brian. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> and. Um, do you know when they arrived in relation to when your husband Christopher arrived? I don't. I don't. I don't recall. Uh, but some point after, correct? Yes. Then after um, they arrived, uh, who, if anyone else, do you recall sort of arriving and, and joining in your group? Um, Jennifer McCabe and Matt McCabe. And there was a couple... Um, I don't even know their name, Colakitis. They arrived. I don't know their first names. Um, and John and Karen arrived shortly after that. And just so we can clear up people, as far as Jennifer mm-hmm. McCabe, we've already mentioned her and Matthew, was that her husband? Mm-hmm. Yes. And the other couple that you were talking about are sort of guessing their names. Have you ever met them before? No. Nope. Um, not anybody that you're particularly friends with or anything like that? No. I know them, who they are, from seeing them maybe at a sporting event or something, but I've never been introduced to them. No. And when you say sort of sporting events, sporting events in relation to, in relation to what? Um, basket, if they were at like a basketball game and I was at a game, like I've just seen them around. I'm assuming probably sporting events, probably a basketball game. And I'm sure it's pretty well understood with this. I just want to clarify. So when you say sporting events, these are kids' sporting events? Kids' sporting events, yes. And so which kids' sporting events would you be at that you would see this couple that you didn't know? Um, Your kids or something? No, Jennifer McCabe's kids. Okay. 
Um, so you would go to sporting events with Jennifer McCabe's kids and see this couple there? Yes. And uh, if you know about how long after Ms. Uh, Brian Albert and Mr. Higgins arrived, uh, did, um, did the McCabe's and this other couple arrive? I really, I don't remember okay. exactly. But after, after Mr. Albert and Mr. Higgins, correct? Correct. Now then you mentioned uh, Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed came in at some point as well. Mm -hmm. So you have yes. to make sure you say yes or no, okay? And the other thing you say, I assume or I guess, don't answer. Okay. If you don't know, you don't. Okay. And if you know, about what time was it that Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed came? Well, before 11 o'clock. No, I'm saying hold on. Silence goes on. And with reference to when Mr. O'Keefe and um, the defendant, Ms. Reed, came into the waterfall, um, where were you in relation to sort of the high top table that you were describing? I was at the top of the high top table closest to the door. And when they came in, where did Mr. O'Keefe and, and the defendant go? Um, John walked in and said hello and kept on walking, I think, to the bar. And Karen came in and stopped at the table to talk for a minute. And during the time that she stopped at the table to talk for a minute, what, if anything, did she do? Um, she opened her jacket and had a glass and pulled the glass out and started <coughs> drinking the drink. And as far as the, the drink in the glass, what, mm -hmm. if anything, did you observe as far as color or anything? Like Clear. And... Um, the glass that she had, mm -hmm. could you see? So the clear liquid inside it, um, how much of the glass was full of that? I don't recall. And she placed it on the table, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what was your reaction to that? I think I laughed and said, <clears throat> made a comment like, you're crazy or something just because she walked in with the glass. Now, did you know where Mr. O'Keefe and, and Mr. Reed had been coming from prior to them getting to the waterfall? Yes. And, and where were they coming from? C.F. McCarthy's. You're familiar with that establishment? <coughs> yes. And where is that in relation to the waterfall? Um, it's maybe 200 steps right next to my husband's restaurant. So on the same side? Of Opposite side. Opposite side. On the same side of Washington Street as your husband's restaurant? Yes. Okay. Um, and then same vicinity from D&E to Waterfall, CF McCarthy's yes. Water. Okay. Yes. Now, um, over the course of the evening, did you have occasion to uh, see Mr. O'Keefe? He was at a bar. He had something to drink. Is that correct? Can you repeat that? Sure. Over the course of the evening, did you have occasion to observe uh, what, if anything, Mr. O'Keefe was drinking? No, I don't believe. I left very shortly after they got there. And so you left fairly shortly after they arrived? Yes. Okay. And if you know about how much time are we talking? Maybe 10, 15 minutes. And why is it that you left? I had a terrible migraine. Um, from the band being so close? Yes. And when you left, where did you go? Home. And when you got home, um, as far as your, your children on that evening, mm -hmm. um, who was home, who was out? If you know. um, my youngest son was home, and my oldest son didn't live at home. He lived in California at the time. And my middle son was not home. And um, so your oldest son, Christopher, he was in the Navy at that He's point? At the, he was in the Navy, and he was stationed in San Diego, yes. And so your middle son, Colin, he was out. Did you know where he was? Yes. He was at, I believe, his friend Michael Leonetti's house. And at some point, did you learn that Colin had gone from that person's house to somewhere else? Yes. Is this him communicating with you? Yes. And that other place that he went to, do uh, you know where that was? Yes. My brother and sister-in-law's, Nicole and Brian Albert's house on Fairview Road. 
And was that in relation to your, your nephew and his birthday? Yes. Now, <clears throat> while you were, if I could take it back to the waterfall, just for a second. Mm -hmm. So while you were at the waterfall, obviously you see uh, Mr. O'Keefe and, and Ms. Reed come in. Um, do you recall what Mr. O'Keefe was wearing? I know he had a hat on. He had jeans on. And he had something with a hood. And from your observations, did you ever see him with like a winter coat or a jacket or anything like that? I did not. And with regard to the clothing that you observed him wearing, did you, what if anything did you observe as far as the condition of that clothing? And that I mean, was it torn? Was it disheveled? Anything like that? No, nothing. Nothing that I remember. And with regard to Mr. O'Keefe, as far as his appearance, what, if anything, did you observe about him as far as injuries or anything? Like that? Nothing. <clears throat> now, with reference to your group as far as uh, at the waterfall, um, how would you describe sort of the overall demeanor or tone of, of, of the group and what was going on then? Just normal. I thought it was just normal, sitting, listening to a band. Um, so at least during the time that you were there, there were no sort of arguments or disagreements or anything like that? Nope, nothing. And specifically to Mr. O'Keefe and the defendant, Ms. Reed, mm -hmm. while you were there during the short time that you were there when they were there, did you observe anything as far as any arguments or disagreements or anything like that? No, I did not. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> at the time, um, so during that time between when they arrived, you mentioned that John went up to the bar, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. And where did the defendant go? She talked to me at the top of the table for a few minutes, and then I believe she made her way down the table to either Jennifer McCabe or the couple that was at the end of the table to speak with. And was it during that period of time that you had enough with the migraine and went home? Yes, I left very, very shortly after that. Uh, during the time that you were there and you were speaking with the defendant down sort of your end of the table, um, what, if anything, was uh, discussed as far as sort of where to go, what to do after the walk? Um, I do know that, I do remember, I'm sorry, that Karen had asked if we could go back to D&E, my husband's store, and make pizza because that's something we frequently do if we're out at the end of the night, if we're hungry. And was that something that you had discussed with Ms. Reed either on that date or on a prior day? I believe um, we discussed just that we went there once and she, we said next time she'll have to come with us. And was that something that was discussed as a possibility or something that was going to happen that night? Um, I think right away I just wasn't going to do that because I wasn't feeling well. And I just I think I might have said talk to Chris because... I wasn't going to do it. And is that something that she mentioned over the course of that evening, once, more than once, or something else? Just once to me. So when you get home, uh, at some point, uh, the rest of your family came home at some point in the evening, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And... Uh, who came home first, uh, your husband Christopher or your son Carl? My husband. Do you know about what time that was? I want to say about after 12, maybe 12.10, um, around there. So sometime around 12.10? Sometime around 12.10, yes. And what, if anything, do you recall specifically about when your husband Christopher came home? Um, he came upstairs to my room. He was shivering because it was cold out, and he immediately... Went to the bathroom, got undressed, and got into bed. And uh, your son, Colin, uh, mm -hmm. have you been in communication with yes. him over the evening? Yes. And about how long was it after your husband came home that your son, Colin? Um, 10 to 15 minutes. And um, were you essentially waiting up for him? Oh, yes. Yep. Is that sort of common practice? Yes. I do not go to bed until my kids are home. And is there another common practice as far as when your kids come home, where do they go when they first come in? They immediately will always come in the door, maybe grab a water out of the fridge and come upstairs and give me a kiss goodnight and tell me that they're home. Now, did that happen on this occasion? Yes. And uh, so Colin came into your room at some point? Yep, he came right upstairs. Yes. 
And when Colin came into your room and he came upstairs, uh, did you have occasion to observe him as far as uh, talk to him? Obviously? Yes, we talked for a minute. He asked me if I was feeling better. Um, and yeah, we talked for a moment. And during that conversation that you had with Colin, uh, same similar to what I had asked you with regard to Mr. O'Keefe, what, if any, injuries or anything did you observe on your son, Colin? None. And uh, fair to say, the next day, at some point, you, you talked to and had interaction with your son? Yes. And what, if any, injuries or anything did you observe? None. That? None. So and I know this is sort of hard, so wait till Mr. Lally finishes his question okay. before answering, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, after your son Colin came home um, and you, you eventually went to bed, is that right? Yes. And um, turning your attention to the next morning, uh, the Saturday morning of the 29th, about what time was it that you woke up? I woke up about eight-ish. And with regard to your nephew, Brian Jr., uh, <coughs> whose birthday it was now on the 29th, what, if any, sort of tradition do you have with respect to him and his birthday? Every year on his birthday, I go to Dunkin' Donuts. I get him six donuts, and I bring them to the house, and I leave them there with a card before he gets up. So when he wakes up, they're there. I've been doing it for years. And is that what your intention was on this morning as well? Yes. And is that what you did on that? Yes. Now, when you woke up... Um, Probably like most people, at some point, did you look at your phone? Yes. And when you looked at the screen to your phone, what, if anything, did you see? I had a missed call from my friend Jen McCabe. And was there any sort of um, notation in regard to the missed call as to what time that had, missed call had come in? Uh, it was 5.55, maybe? So sometime earlier in the morning. Early morning, yes. And beyond uh, the missed call, was there any other sort of uh, stamp or notification on the phone as far as a voicemail, text message? Nope. I'm sorry. No, there was not. And not from Ms. McKay, correct? Correct. And not from anybody else? Correct. And uh, at any point in time on that morning over the phone, did you speak with Ms. McKay? No, I did not. And uh, did you call her? So you didn't call her back or anything like that? I did not. And so after you wake up, at some point you go to Dunkin' Donuts and get the six donuts? Yes. And where did you go with those? I drove to 34 Fairview. And when you arrived at 34 Fairview, uh, where did you park in relation to the house? I pulled into the driveway. And um, when you came up to the house and you were driving to the house, at this point it was, what was the weather like it was coming down. The snow was coming down pretty good. And um, with reference to the house, what, if anything, did you notice out of the ordinary with regard to the house or the street or anything else? Um, Jennifer McCabe's car was in the driveway. And um, <clears throat> as far as any other vehicles on the street or anything like that, what was going on at that point? I don't recall. I don't. Nothing you can recall? No. Oh, what time was this that you got there? 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, 8.30, um, around that. And when you get there, you pull in the driveway, what, what did you do? I opened my car door. I got out to walk to the car in front of me to leave the donuts and card inside <coughs> my nephew Brian's car. And Brian Albert came to the door. Brian Albert Sr. came to the door. And he told me to come in, asked me to come in for a second. And I said that I didn't need to. And he said, I said, I'm just leaving these, get this gift for Brian Jr. And he said, no, just come in for a second. So I went into the house. And when you walk into uh, 34 Fairview Road on that morning, mm -hmm. anyone else was there? <laughs> Nicole Albert, Brian Albert, Brian Higgins. Jennifer McCabe and Matt McCabe. And where were they in relation to, to the house? In the kitchen. And um, what, if anything, did they tell you at that time? When I first walked in, nothing. Everyone was just sitting there, 
And I was looking around and everyone was visibly upset. And I asked what, what's going on. And another maybe 30 seconds went by and Jen said, something's happened to John. And I said, John, I'm, she said, John O'Keefe. And I said, is he, is he okay? Objection. No, I'm going to allow it. I said, is he okay? And she said, we don't know. And that was that. And after hearing um, that information, mm -hmm. uh, how long were you, were you at your brother and sister-in-law's house? I mean? Probably about half hour, 45 minutes, maybe. And um, where did you go from there? I went home to wake my husband up to let him know what had happened. And at some point after you go home and wake up your husband, where did you and your husband go? We went back to third. I woke up my husband, told him what had happened, and we went back to Fairview. And so the second time that you had gone back to Fairview, mm -hmm. how long a period of time were you there that time? I would say probably half hour, not long. And then after that half hour or so, where did you go after? Back home to my house. Now, during either of those occasions when you were at um, 34 Fairview Road on the morning of the 29th, you had occasion to talk and observe uh, Brian Albert Sr., correct? Yes. And similar to the questions that I asked with regard to Mr. O'Keefe and your son Colin, uh, what, if any, injuries or anything out of place did you note with respect to, to Brian Albert Sr.? Nothing that I saw. Uh, same question with respect to Mr. Higgins, as far as you made observations and spoke at least in the same room as him on that morning? Yes. And uh, what, if anything, did you observe as far as injuries or anything else on Mr. Higgins? Nothing. Now, when you woke up uh, your husband that next morning, um, your other two sons, uh, being Colin and, and Dylan, they were at home still? Yes, they were at home still asleep. And uh, with regards to when you went to Fairview, came back with your husband, went back to Fairview, and then came back again, were they still asleep? I don't remember. You recall, well, let me put it this way. As far as your sons, did they, either of your sons come back with you to Fairview Road mm -hmm. that day? No, they did not. And do you recall whether or not either Colin or Dylan was awake when you left a second time to go to Fairview? I don't. At some point a few days after this, uh, did you have occasion to meet with um, a couple troopers from the state police? Yes, I did. They came to my home. And when you say they, how many of them? Came? There were two. And you spoke to them that day in reference to what you had observed at the waterfall, everything you just <laughs> Yes, I did. May I have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. Just one last question. When you, I'm Zelda, when you came over to Fairview Road that first time with the donuts, as far as the inside of the house, what, if anything, did you observe as far as the, the condition of the home or anything about the home that seems at or out of place or off, you know, from the evening before when you were there? Nothing. I have nothing further for this witness, Ryan. Okay, Ms. Tianetti. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Albert. Good afternoon. You and I have never met, correct? Correct. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a question that, uh, and an answer that, that Mr. Lally asked you and that you uh, responded to. Uh, he had just uh, asked you whether or not a few days later you spoke with a couple of state troopers. Do you recall that question? Yes. And your answer was yes? Yes. You would agree with me that it was more than just a few days later, correct? I, I don't know. February 10th of 2022, 
that two state troopers came to speak with you and your husband, Chris, correct? Correct. Uh, and so we're talking about 13 days later, almost two weeks later, correct? If that was the date, yes, correct. Prior to February 10th, no investigator from this case uh, bothered to talk to you or your husband, correct? Correct. Now, in terms of the two investigators who did come, uh, you, know, you knew one of them quite well, did you not? I knew them. I wouldn't say quite well, but I knew them. Okay, and when you say you knew them... Him. I'm sorry, him. Okay. And who was it that you knew? Michael Proctor. Uh, Michael Proctor was the brother of one of your close friends, correct? Correct. Uh, you're close friends with Courtney Proctor, correct? I am. And, uh, by the way, your maiden name is Daniels, correct? Yes, it is. And you have a sister, Jill Daniels, correct? Yes, I do. And you would agree that uh, Jill Daniels is also lifelong best friends with Courtney Proctor, correct? Yes, she is. And in terms of your relationship with Courtney Proctor, you socialize with her, do you not? Jackson. Do you? Um, occasionally, yes. Um, go out for drinks with her, correct? Yes. Um, you've attended parties with her, correct? Yes. Um, you've also provided child care for her children, correct? Yes. Objection. I'll just strike. Right, I'll, I'll see you on si at sidebar on this, Mr. Bay. Tell everybody. So, uh, Ms. Albert, you provided child care for Courtney Proctor's children? Objection. You need a time frame, Ms. Stevens. Have you ever provided child care for Courtney Proctor's children? Jackson. So you, you need a time frame. Um, before January of 2022, did you provide child care for Courtney Proctor's children? Yes. When? Twenty nineteen. 2019. Just that one year? Yeah, it was pre-COVID. And then when COVID happened and everything shut down, I wasn't helping her any longer. Okay. And then occasionally after, I would help just on an on need, as needed basis okay. after COVID. And uh, during that year of 2019, how often did you watch her children? Two days a week. And she had a boy and a girl? Correct. What were their names? Jack and Caroline. And Jack and Caroline were Trooper Proctor's niece and nephew, correct? Yes. Um, the Proctor family entrusted you with the care of their children, correct? Jackson. It's sustained as asked. You know that Michael Proctor is a state trooper, correct? Yes. Um, you knew that he also was from Canton? Yes. You knew his wife, Elizabeth Proctor? Yes. And you were also aware that Courtney Proctor had recommended you to also watch Michael Proctor and Elizabeth Proctor's children, correct? Objection, move to strike. That objection sustained. But you go back a long way with Courtney Proctor, correct? Correct. Um, in fact, you were certainly at her wedding, correct? Jackson. S sustained. Your son was a ring bearer at that wedding. Jackson. All right, so we'll sustain that through this witness. Um, you've spent time at Michael Proctor's childhood home, have you not? <clears throat> yes. You've been to the pool at the Proctor's house, correct? Yes. May we approach?
many times have you been to the Proctor's pool? I'd say maybe a dozen. And you've certainly taken your children there as well? Yes. Colin has been to the Proctor's pool? Yes. And you've seen Michael Proctor, mother and father at that pool, correct? Yes. Uh, you've seen Courtney Proctor and her husband at that pool, correct? Yes. Um, you are very close with Courtney Proctor, correct? I don't, how would you define very? Well, I guess I'd ask you to define very close. Do you, do you deny that you were very close with Courtney Proctor? No. I Objection, Your Honor. No, that, go ahead. Next question. You got your answer. I, I didn't hear the answer. Go ahead. Repeat that. You, do you deny that you were very close with Courtney Proctor? No. Okay. You talk regularly, correct? Yes. You text each other, correct? Yes. You also talk by phone? Very rarely. Um, is it uh, fair to did you say very rarely? You talk phone, before, usually, you talk usually phone? it's text. But do you stand by that testimony that you talk to Courtney Proctor very rarely by phone? Do we have, do we have a time frame? Do you mean now or do you mean then? Let me ask you this. Between February 1st of 2022 and September 6th of 2022, did you only speak rarely with Courtney Proctor? I don't recall. Um, were you using Courtney Proctor as an intermediary to communicate with Michael Proctor about this case. Objection. I'll allow it. No, I was not. Are you aware that between February 1st of 2022 and September 6th of 2022, you and Courtney Proctor spoke by phone 67 times? Objection. Were you aware of that? No, I don't know the exact count. Do you deny that you spoke 67 times? I don't deny it, but I don't, I don't recall the exact amount of times. Okay, so you don't deny that you spoke 67 times. You still want to maintain your testimony that you only talked very rarely with Courtney Proctor during that time period. I just don't remember the exact amount of times. Well, you know that my client, Karen Reed, was arrested in connection with this case on February 1st of 2022, do you not? I do. You spoke to Courtney Proctor that date for 12 minutes by phone, correct? I don't recall exactly. I don't remember exactly. May I approach? Sure. Uh, before I approach, mm -hmm. your memory is exhausted as to whether you spoke to Courtney Proctor that day, and if so, how long the two of you spoke? Yes. Um, I'm showing you a document uh, with a number of... Uh, just show it to her. Right. No, I just wanted to point out which one that I'm pointing out. So the third... I was going to say a number of lines. The, the third line down, uh, if you would take a look at that specific date and time and see if that refreshes your memory about whether and how long you spoke to Courtney Proctor on February 1st, 2022. Can you see that or do you need glasses? No, I can see it. I do have a pair of readers that I need as well, if you need to borrow them. Yes, if I could. Of course. Thank you. I and left I, mine downstairs. I, I just got these, and it's like Mr. Unetti, just bring them up, Sorry. please. <laughs> uh, it took me a while to figure them out, but anyway. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's the third, yeah, third line. Third down. line down. Yes, I see it. I just, I don't. 
I don't recall. This okay. It's a long time ago. Thank you. And you, you say that having seen this record, it does not refresh your memory that you spoke to Courtney Proctor for. Don't don't. It does not refresh your memory. That's where you have to be. Okay. Um, did did Courtney Proctor tell you the day of? My, of my client's arrest on February 1st that she had been discussing the case with her brother that day? Objection. Sustained. Did you speak to Courtney Proctor that day in any fashion? What day exactly? The day of my client's arrest on February 1st of 2022. That was on the sheet you just gave me? It was. Well, I did, obviously, if it was on that sheet. Okay. Uh, and when you talked to her... Did she tell you that she had discussed the case with her brother? Objection. Sustained. Were you notified that Karen was going to be arrested? Objection. Sustained. What did you discuss? I don't recall. Um, the next day, February 2nd of 2022, was the day that my client was arraigned back in Stoughton District Court. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Um, you spoke to Courtney Proctor three times that day before my client's publicly televised arraignment at 9 a.m., did you not? Again, I don't remember. Um, after the arraignment, you spoke to her again for 27 minutes beginning at 10.58 a.m., did you not? I don't recall. Okay. So... Your testimony is, well, strike that. Uh, my client's arrest was pretty big news in Massachusetts, wasn't it? Objection. Sustained. You were aware that my client had been arrested, correct? Yes, I had seen it on the news. You were aware that she was being arraigned the very next day, were you not? Yes. This case involved your family, did it not? How do you mean it? Well, you knew that John O'Keefe was found dead on your brother-in-law, Brian Albert's lawn, correct? Correct. So necessarily, your family was involved in this case, correct? Somewhat, yes. And you knew that ultimately you'd probably be talked to by investigators from this case, correct? I assume so, yes. Right. Didn't happen for 13 days, but ultimately they did come, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, so this case had to have been pretty big news within the Albert family, was it not? Well, yes, yes. You were discussing it with your husband, correct? Yes. You were discussing it with your other relatives, correct? Yes. You were discussing it with your friends, correct? I don't know about my friends, but... Okay. Yeah. So is it your testimony that with all of this going on, you confined your discussions about this case just to your specific family members? Not necessarily. No. I mean, clearly, you would have talked to Courtney Proctor about it, correct? Jackson. Interesting. So, folks, why don't we end? Yeah. All right. Um, he's out there. You'll have to be back tomorrow for yep. your glasses. True culture is nothing but the truth, so I'll be I do. Okay, I'm just going to remind you, keep your voice up, please, Ms. Albert, okay? okay? All right, Ms. Giannetti? Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Albert. Good morning. Uh, Ma'am, you will recall yesterday, um, I broached the topic with you of how often you and Courtney Proctor speak to each other over the phone. Do you recall that line of question? Yes. And when I ask you to describe the frequency of those phone calls, uh, I, I didn't put any words in your mouth, did I? I didn't suggest how frequently they were. You came up with the word. I don't really. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, when I ask you how often you talked to Courtney Proctor, you could have chosen any word in the English language to answer that question, correct? Correct. What was the word that you chose? 
Not often. I I, I don't remember, Almost honestly. Rarely. Rarely, yes. That was your word, correct? It could have been. I don't really recall. I was, I don't recall. Uh, you don't recall telling this jury yesterday that when I asked you about how often you spoke to Courtney Proctor by phone, you said, well, rarely. I don't remember. What is your definition of rarely? <clears throat> not daily. I, not daily, not... Yes. Once in a blue moon? No. Uh, rarely doesn't mean to you 67 phone conversations within a seven-month period, does it? A 67 time period in how many? Eight months? In about seven months, 67 times. It's, it's not a lot. I, w I wouldn't think it's a lot in seven months. Three times in one day? Is that rarely? No, but I'm not. That wasn't every day. I would. Okay, well, when you left the stand yesterday, uh, did you log into your account or check any gold bills to confirm those 67 calls? No, I did not. Did you speak to Mr. Lally about those 67 calls after we broke yesterday and before you took the stand today? I don't believe so, no. Did you call Courtney Proctor in one of those rare occasions yesterday? No, I did not. This morning? No, I did not. Were you, were you curious as to whether or not you had actually called her those 67 times? Objection. Sustained. All right. Uh, in any case, regarding all of those 67 phone calls from February 1st until September 6th, do you maintain that during none of those calls or any portion of those calls did you and Courtney Proctor uh, discuss the investigation into the death of John O'Keefe? I do not remember. Uh, do, you, do you deny discussing that investigation? I don't deny, but I do not remember. All right. Well, you admitted yesterday after having seen the records that you spoke with Michael Proctor's sister for 12 minutes on February 1st of 2022. Do you recall that? I don't recall the conversation. No, right. I don't. It was a long time ago. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. Finish your answer. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. I just don't remember. Okay. But, but my question is, after seeing the records, you saw the phone call for over 12 minutes, correct? Correct. Uh, and you also remember that that was the very day that the police arrested Karen Reed for this case, correct? Correct. Uh, the arrest of Karen Reed on February 1st was pretty big news in Massachusetts, correct? Objection. Sustained. You had seen that arrest all over the news, correct? Correct. Uh, so you certainly, given the day and the fact that it was February 1st and my client was arrested that day and you're talking to the lead investigator's sister, the subject of Karen Reed's arrest had to have come up, right? Objection. Sustained, ask it differently. Uh, you, you certainly mentioned my client's arrest with Courtney Proctor on the very day that she was arrested and you were talking to Courtney, correct? Correct. Now, when we broke for the day yesterday, I had uh, also asked you about the three phone calls that you had with Michael Proctor's sister on the morning of February 2nd when my client was arraigned, correct? Correct. Uh, and you recall that her arraignment was... Uh, televised publicly, correct? Objection. Sustained. Let's get differently. You, you saw her on the news being arraigned, correct? Correct. And one of those phone calls after, well, strike that. With regard to the three phone calls before the, the, the arraignment, uh, you knew at that time that my client had been arra arrested the day before, correct? Correct. And you knew she would be arraigned in court that morning, correct? 
Correct. Uh, certainly, when you were talking to Michael Proctor's sister on February 2nd, before her 9 o'clock arraignment, you were discussing the 9 o'clock arraignment, correct? Can you repeat the end of that, please? Before. On February 2nd, the day that my client was scheduled to be arraigned in Stoughton District Court, we're talking about the three phone calls that you made to Michael Proctor's sister before that arraignment that very day. And my question is, certainly, you were discussing the fact that she was about to be arraigned, correct? Objection. Sustained. Ask it differently, Mr. Did the subject of Karen Reed's arraignment come up in any of those three calls on February 2nd, the day she was going to be arraigned, before her arraignment? I don't remember exactly. What about the 27-minute phone call that you had with Courtney Proctor at 10.58 a.m.? that same day after my client was arraigned in court. Did you discuss the arraignment that had just happened? I do not remember. Uh, it would already testify that by 2022, you were no longer babysitting for Courtney Parker's kids, correct? I wasn't babysitting regularly like I was before. So is it your testimony that you happen to be talking about babysitting on February 2nd for 27 minutes, the same day that my client was arraigned in Stoughton District Court? I, I don't remember what I was talking about. It could have been about the kids. It could have been about, it, it could have been about anything. I don't remember. Sure. And, and certainly it could have been about the publicly televised arraignment that had just occurred, correct? Objection. <laughs> So I'll allow this, and then let's move away from this, okay? Can it, you answer that? Yes, it could have been. Yes. Uh, did you tell Courtney Proctor during any of these 67 phone calls that you were a witness in her brother's case? I don't remember. Okay. Ms. Albert, you were at the waterfall on the night of January 28th, correct? Yes. And you also went to 34 Fairview on the morning of January 29th. Yes. Yet, uh, as of the date of these phone calls that we've discussed so far, the February 1st and the February 2nd, multiple phone calls, um, Trooper Proctor still had not interviewed you, correct? Correct. Uh, you were finally interviewed by Trooper Proctor on February 10th, about 13 days after John O'Keefe was found dead on Brian Albert's farm, correct? Correct. And you told Courtney Proctor that you were nervous to speak to her brother, Trooper Proctor, about this case. Do you remember that? I do not remember those exact words, no. All right. But you were nervous to speak to him, correct? Of course, I was nervous in general for a police interview. I mean, I don't know someone who wouldn't be. Were you worried that one of Trooper Proctor's colleagues might ask to speak to your son, Colin, about what had happened on the 28th and the 29th? Objection. Was I nervous they would ask my son? Yeah, were you nervous that one of the investigators in this case might approach your son to ask him about his whereabouts? No. All right. Uh, in any case, you were interviewed at 5.30 p.m. on February 10th, correct? Correct. Where did that interview take place? At my home in Canton. Who was present for that interview? Me, my husband, Trooper Proctor, and Trooper Bukaki. Bukaki. Michael Proctor agreed to interview you and your husband together, correct? Jackson. Sustained. You and your husband were interviewed together, correct? Correct. Did either of these troopers, including Michael Proctor, suggest that maybe the two of you should be separately interviewed? I don't recall. Um, what I don't remember. Did it take place within your home? In my family room. Uh, were you sitting on couches? Yes. You're comfortable? Yes. You were not in a police interrogation room, correct? No, I was not. And it wasn't particularly lengthy, correct? What do you define lengthly? Well, I, I, don't recall, I don't remember how long it was exactly. 
it didn't go into the evening, correct? No. Uh, and then uh, Michael Proctor and the other trooper left, correct? Correct. Then at 6.17 p.m. that same night, uh, shortly after you had been interviewed, you called Michael Proctor's personal cell phone number, correct? I, I don't remember. I may have a moment. Okay. Um, you didn't bring your tutors today. Oh, you did? Good. Okay. Uh, may I approach Shara? Yes. This is the same document. Uh, I'm going to hand you one document. There's an orange sticky on it, and you can ignore. Okay. But right above the orange sticky, there's a date of February 10th. That's what I'm directing your attention to. You could look at those two phone calls, uh, ma'am, and look up at me when you're done. If I may approach. Yes. Did that refresh your memory about those two phone calls on February 10th? I mean, I just read them, but I don't remember. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You called Trooper Proctor at 6.17 p.m., and it appears to be a five-second phone call. Did you see that? Objection, Your Honor. Do you recall that Trooper Proctor called you back that same day at 6.21 p.m. and that you spoke for about four minutes? Objection, Your Honor. Okay. Do you deny speaking to Trooper Proctor for four minutes when he called you from his personal cell phone on February 10th of 2022 after you had been interviewed that day? No, I don't deny it, but I don't, I don't remember it. Uh, when did you get his personal cell phone number? I don't remember. Years ago? I'm sure, yes. Because you've known that family for a long time. Yes, I have. And uh, as you testify here today, you can't remember what that phone call would have been about, correct? No, I do not remember. Okay. Uh, I'd like to contrast your relationship with Karen Reed versus your relationships with uh, Jennifer McCabe and Courtney Proctor. You would agree with me, and I think you testified yesterday, that Jennifer McCabe is one of your best friends. Correct. And you call her Jen, correct? Yes. And Courtney Proctor is also one of your best friends, correct? She's not one of my best friends, no. She's a good friend. She's not one of my best friends, no. She's, She's my sister's best friend. Gotcha. Okay. So your sister... My Jillian, sister Jillian, yes. Jillian is best friends with Courtney Proctor, and you're close friends with her, but not best friends. Correct. Uh, but you really only knew Karen Reed as John O'Keefe's girlfriend, correct? Correct. She was just an acquaintance of yours. Yes. Uh, there are no photos of you in a hot tub together, right? You and Karen Reed? No. There are no photos of you with your arms around each other at the beach, correct? No. You've never been to a baby shower with Karen Reed, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Uh, you didn't have any contact with Karen Reed while you were growing up, correct? No. Uh, Karen Reed was definitely not from camp, correct? Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow this and then you can move on. No, she was not. No, she, one more question. She was an outsider, correct, to Canton? She didn't live in Canton. All right. Uh, but after you, she started dating John, you would see her driving in and out of the street, correct? Yes. You'd see her taking groceries in, correct? Yes. Because you were neighbors with John? Yes. And the, it was the fact that you'd see her around, you know, taking groceries in and out of the house and being outside with the kids that led you to believe that she was not only connected to John, but also to this house on Meadows Ave, correct? Yes. And you would see her interacting with the kids outside, correct? Yes. Um, she would be participating in family-type activities with the kids outside? Yes. And you'd see her enough that you assumed that she was living there, correct? Yes. And I believe you stated that you had known her or seen her for maybe about a year and a half or so. Is that a good estimate? Yes. 
And in all the time that you saw her in the neighborhood or had any contact with her and John, you never saw the two of them fight or argue, correct? No. You never heard them fight or argue, correct? No. And you had been out with them in a group setting a handful of times, correct? Just a couple of times. And during those times, they always appeared to get along, correct? Yes. And you knew of no problems in their relationship, correct? No. And you were particularly impressed with the time Karen spent with John's adopted children. Objection. Were you? Can you repeat that one small, please? You, you were particularly, you were impressed with the amount of time that Karen spent with John's children. I didn't know the exact, really, amount of time. That, I mean, she was there a lot, yes. she was. So, yes, I would assume that she spent a lot of time with them, yes. Now, on Friday, January 28th, uh, you had plans with your sister-in-law, Nicole, correct? Yes. You are close with Nicole. Yes, I am. You picked her up at her home in your car. Yes. You drove her to the waterfall, correct? <laughs> correct. And the two of you went for dinner there? Yes. Uh, your husband, Chris, came later? Yes. Brian Higgins came later? Yes. And you knew Brian Higgins, correct? Yes. Yes. I want to stop you for one yes. second. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, thank you, Ron. Um, I believe you testified that you knew Brian Higgins at that time, correct? Yes. And how did you know him? He is a friend of my brother-in-law. And your brother-in-law would be Brian Albert, correct? Yes. And by the way, when I, when I just asked you that question uh, about how you knew Brian Higgins and what his relationship was to Brian Albert, you, you didn't hesitate to say that they were friends, correct? Correct. It was very clear that they were friends, correct? Correct. In fact, the two of them arrived at the bar together, correct? Yes. And it didn't surprise you to see the two of them together, correct? No. Karen and John came sometime after that? I believe shortly after that, yes. And they walked over to your table? Yes. And then John kind of came up from behind you and uh, sort of in a joking way, dug his finger into your shoulder. Correct, yes. And essentially said, you know, you know, what's up? And that was about it. And he went on, correct? Uh, he made a, he said, what's up? And made a joke. And, 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 and the joke was, given the fact that you and your husband moved from the neighborhood, they decided to hold a block party. Correct? Yes. Uh, and John was the same jokester he always was, Correct. Correct, yes. And you had some contact with Karen uh, while you were at the bar before you had to leave because of the migraine, correct? Correct. And she was just very bubbly that night, correct? Correct. That's just her personality as far as you could see, correct? As far as I knew, yes. Um, you know, you didn't know her that well, but that's how she always was, correct? Correct. And you left the waterfall at a, around 11 o'clock, your best memory? A little after 11. And it was a particularly bad migraine that night? Yes. Uh, and the loud music didn't help you out at all? Not at all. And you drove home? Yes. Now, when you got home, your son Colin was not there, correct? Correct. He was not out with you at the waterfall? Correct. He was out that night, correct? Yes. And you knew that he stops by your sister-in-law, Nicole's house, uh, quite a bit, correct? Yes. He's very close to Nicole and Brian's kids, correct? Correct. He's also very close to his aunt and uncle, uh, Brian Albert and Nicole Albert, correct? Correct. So you would have gotten home uh, maybe shortly after 11, 10 p.m. approximately? Around 11, yep, around that. And that was when you entered an empty house, correct? My son Dylan was home. Oh, Dylan was home. Yes. Okay. Uh, but Colin was not. He was not. And Colin did not come home at 11.30, correct? Correct. He did not come home at 11.45, correct? Correct. And when the clock turned midnight, he still wasn't home, correct? Correct. Um, now, at some point, he, uh, your husband Chris came home, correct? Yes. You testified on direct examination that Chris came home at 12.10 a.m. on January 29th. That's the time I believe he did, yes. Okay. That 12.10 a.m. time, um, did you discuss that precise time with anybody prior to taking the stand yesterday? No. Was that coordinated with anybody such that your husband and you gave the same time at 12, 10 a.m.? No. 
Um, with the court's permission, I'd like to play the uh, waterfall bully video. I think it's exhibit 53, just that portion of the 12. We may just have a moment, Your Honor. You've testified that uh, the, the waterfall is very close to DE Pizza, correct? Correct. Um, but your house on Maple Street is a, about a half mile away from the waterfall. Would you agree with that? About that, yes. Maybe a little less, but about that. All right. Uh, would you agree it's a you know, seven or eight minute walk? home from the waterfall if you're walking? I, know, I realize you were driving, but if somebody were walking, it would be about seven or eight minutes? Maybe a minute or two less. Okay. So six, you would say six or seven minutes would be a better estimate to cover that half mile? Depends on how fast you walk, yes. Uh, and it was snowing that night, correct? Correct. Uh, the ground was a little bit slippery? Yes. If I make a more. Um, if I could have the lights dimmed again. Uh, this is the exhibit I'd like to show you, ma'am. And you can hope, if you can pause for one second. Uh, do you recognize what's depicted in that video? Does that appear to be the waterfall? Yes. Okay. Uh, and do you see the top? <laughs> Do you see the time, 12, 13 a.m.? Yes. Uh, okay, if you could run that, Mr. Bates. Pause it there. Um, I am going to direct your. Do you see where it says CH3? Yes. And you see the, the timestamp up at the top, correct? Yes. Between those two markers on the video, uh, you're going to see somebody walking by. I'd ask you to pay attention for the next, you know, six seconds or so. All right. Stop. Do you recognize that person? Yes, I believe it's my husband. Okay. If you can run that. Stop. Okay. Uh, would you agree with me that your husband left the waterfall at about 12, 13, and 46 seconds? Well, yes. I mean, that's what it says on the screen. Okay. So it was closer to 214 than to 210. Would you agree with that? 12, 14, you mean? Uh, Two. You know what? You're right. Um, 1214, then 1210. Yes, that's what I'm seeing. Thank you. Uh, so if, if he's leaving at around 1214, and by your testimony, it would have taken him six, he was walking home, you knew that, correct? Yes. He, he didn't have a car that night. He did not. And it, if it took him six or seven minutes to get home, uh, and, and by the way, <laughs> let me strike that question. Uh, you had said it takes six or seven minutes. Did you factor in the fact that of the weather that night uh, for your estimate about a six or seven minute walk? Objection. Can you answer that question? Is that what you said? Yes, I didn't factor in the what I, I don't. I don't know. All right. So your, your testimony would be you, you don't know if it would have taken him a little bit longer or anybody. Anybody. Everyone walks at a different pace. Right, but whatever pace they walk at, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, given what you saw of the weather that night, uh, is it your testimony that maybe it would have taken a little bit longer than the, the estimate? Because it of the could weather? have. Okay. It, but in any case, let's leave it at six or seven minutes. That puts him, your husband, coming home at around 1220 or 1221, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, and that 1210 estimate that you had, uh, you made that estimate before having the benefit of the video, correct? Correct. Right. Now, 
Where were you within the house when your husband came home? In my room. Bedroom? Upstairs in my bedroom. All right. And you share a bedroom with your husband? Yes. Uh, and when, he, when was the first time that you saw him within the house? He came up to the bedroom. Okay, so you were in the bedroom and you see him appear in the bedroom. Correct. Did you hear the door open way down on the first floor? Yes. Okay. And it would have taken him maybe about a minute to get upstairs? It wasn't very long? It wouldn't be very long, no. Okay. And when he got upstairs, you noticed that he was in wet clothing, correct? Yes. Yes. He appeared to be cold. Yes. Uh, and he, uh, he got undressed, correct? Yes. Uh, did he brush his teeth before bed? I think he got right into bed. Okay. So you didn't see him brush his teeth or wash up? No. Uh, and were you <laughs> in the bed when he came into the bed to go to sleep? I was sitting up in bed, yes. Were you reading or watching TV? I was just sitting up in bed praying for my headache to go away. Oh, okay. You still, the migraine was still really yes. bothering you. And you were suffering at that point. Suffering? I had a headache. Well, yeah, but a migraine yeah. headache, I would yeah. imagine. It was, it was a headache, but I took medicine and I was waiting for it to waiting get better. to kick in? Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's sort of what you were concentrating on. It's really kind of hard to read or watch TV or concentrate on anything when you have a migraine, right? Okay, yes. Um, now, you would agree with me that uh, your husband Chris was asleep when Colin came home, correct? Correct. And as a mother, you couldn't have gone to sleep until you knew your kids were home, correct? Correct. And Colin was the remaining child who was out there, which when he came home, that would give given, given you license to go to sleep. Yes. Now, at the time that uh, Colin came home with Chris sleeping, it's fair to say uh, this was just an ordinary weekend night, correct? How do you... Well, in other words, you, you didn't know that anything tragic had occurred or was alleged to have occurred, correct? Correct. Uh, so it wasn't like you were paying attention to the clock at that point and recording your memories as best you could because you knew you'd be testifying later, correct? Correct. Which also explains the 1210 estimate, right? I mean, you're, you're being asked about, you know, times that things occurred, and it was just sort of an ordinary day, right? So it's difficult to pinpoint times, correct? Correct. Okay. Now... Directing your attention to the next morning, uh, you missed a phone call from your best friend, Jennifer McCabe, correct? Correct. And you believe that phone call, I think according to your memory, yesterday came in at 5.55 p.m., correct? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, 5.55 a.m., correct? Correct. Uh, that was the time that you gave uh, Mr. Lally when he asked you the question on direct examination, Correct. Correct. Uh, and you were, you were able to recall that time nearly two years later, correct? Yes. Uh, but regarding the 67 phone calls between you and Courtney Proctor that happened after that, um, you're not re able to recall any of those, correct? I just don't remember them. All right, in any case, January 29th was your nephew, Brian Albert Jr.'s birthday, correct? Yes. That's why you went to 34 Fairview at 8.30 in the morning, correct? Yes. And when you pulled into the driveway, uh, there was nothing unusual to you, correct? Correct. This was just your uh, brother-in-law, Brian, and your sister-in-law, Nicole's house with snow around, correct? Yes. Uh, there were no police on scene? No. There was no tent protecting the front lawn, correct? Correct. No crime scene tape stapled anywhere or taped anywhere, correct? Correct. Um, 
Nobody appeared to be standing guard over the front yard, correct? Correct. You didn't see any shard of glass, right? No, I did not. Um, you didn't see 45 pieces of tail light strewn about the lawn, correct? Correct. Uh, in fact, you didn't see any pieces of tail light, correct? I don't recall seeing anything. And you didn't suspect that 34 Fairview was a crime scene, correct? Objection. Sustained. There was nothing that prevented you from walking all over that front lawn, correct? Correct. It was still snowing out? Yes. Brian Albert, when you approached the house, he opened the door, correct? I approached the car, not the house. Oh, okay. You approached whose car was it? My nephew Brian's. Brian? In the driveway, yes. All right. Uh, and then Brian Albert opened the door of the house. The side door of the home, yes. All right, so uh, can I have exhibit uh, A, please, uh, with the court's permission? Yes. Um, could we zoom in just a little bit? That's good. I am so bad at this stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, that that I'm highlighting now is the front door to the house, correct? Yes. And if we move along Exhibit 8 to the right... Is that the side door? Yes. And that's the door that Brian Albert appeared from? Yes. And you were able to see him from the outside of the house, correct? Yes. And you were over to this area? Yes. Do you recall, was, is it one of those two cars that's in Exhibit 8 that you approached with the Dunkin' Donuts? I can't make out what the cars are. Okay. Uh, but it was, it was either one of those two cars or a car that was parked in one of those two places. Yes. All right. Uh, and then uh, you went, did you go in that side door to go into the house? Yes. Fair to say um, that family has lived there for quite a while, correct? Yes. You knew that uh, prior to Brian Albert and... <clears throat> Well, that's really bad form to block the jury. I am so sorry. It's good I didn't trip. Um, the uh, door that is the front door, um, having you know been familiar with that house for a long time, you've gone in that front door before, correct? Yes. And you know that when you go in the front door of that house, uh, you come into a little foyer area, correct? Correct. And then... Almost within arm's distance to the left is the door to the basement, correct? Walking in the front door, arm's distance to the left? Yes. In other words, you, you, you walk into the house, yep. and then the door to the basement, going down to the basement, is right there on the left, correct? That's incorrect. To the left is a library. All right. Where is the door to the basement? You walk in the front door, you step to the right, walk a few steps towards the kitchen, and the basement door is on the left before you enter the kitchen. All right. But the kitchen's off to the left, correct? No. When you walk in the front door, the library is on the left. There's another room on the left. Okay. So you walk in, you immediately see a staircase in front of you. Yeah. And to the left is the library. Right. If and you go to the right... I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. If you go to the right, you can go into the part of the kitchen where the kitchen table is. Or you can not go to the right, you can walk straight, and as you're walking, there's a door on the left, and that's where the basement door is. Okay, so I think we're getting to what I was getting at. Uh, if you walk straight ahead, there's a door to the left that goes down to the basement, correct? Correct. Yes. Uh, we can have the left one. <clears throat> and when you were walking toward that side door, uh, you didn't see any emergency or police vehicles outside, correct? No, I did not. You didn't see any first responders other than Brian Albert, correct? Correct. There were no lights flashing outside the house, correct? Correct. And inside, you saw Nicole Albert? Yes. Brian Albert? Yes. 
Jennifer McCabe. Yes. Matt McCabe. Yes. And Brian Higgins, correct? Yes. How long did you spend at the house that morning? I don't remember exactly. Maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. I, I don't remember exactly. And the seven of you were discussing what had happened, correct? Yes. At some point, it was decided that Jennifer McCabe should contact Michael Lank of the, Cambridge, of the Canton Police, correct? Objection. I'll let, if this witness knows, independently. Can you repeat that once more, please? At, at some point, it was decided among the seven of you that Jennifer McCabe should contact Michael Lank of the Can Canton Police Department. I don't remember who exactly it, Jennifer decided. Yeah, I don't remember exactly the discussion. You knew Michael Lank, correct? Yes. And at 8.53 a.m., you sent to Jennifer McCabe Michael Lank's personal cell phone number, correct? Correct. Um, and did you then see Jennifer McCabe delete that text message from you? Jackson. I'll sustain you. You were contacted by the Massachusetts State Police this year about your phone, correct? Correct. They left you a voicemail on March 21st of 2024? The State Police? Yes. About my telephone? Well, they left you a voicemail on March 21st of 2024. You've had contact with the State Police this year? Yes. Um, and they left you a second voicemail on March 25 and then called you again on March 28th? Yes. Um, you told them that you were sick and you would speak to them on April 1st, correct? Correct. And then the state police called you on April 1st, but you did not pick up. Do you recall that? I do not. They called you again that same day and you didn't respond, correct? I, I don't recall. <laughs> um, but you did learn that they had called your husband on April 1st looking for you, correct? For, I don't recall. All right. Uh, after speaking with your husband, you texted the Massachusetts State Police on April 1st, correct? I think around that. I don't know the exact date. All right. And you finally met with the Massachusetts State Police on April 3rd of 2024, correct? I, I would assume. I don't know the exact date, but yes. And the, uh, during that meeting, the, the State Police looked through your phone for contact that you would have had with Mike Proctor, correct? Correct. Um, did they seize your phone? No, they did not. Did they tell you that they had a search warrant for your phone? No, they did not. Did they take it back saying that they had to give it to some experts <clears throat> to do an extraction? Objection. Sustained. They just looked through it after you handed it to them, correct? Correct. Then they gave it back? Yes. Now, with regard to your contact with Karen on January 28th, um, it was clear to you that Karen did not appear to be under the influence, correct? Correct. You didn't see her stumbling, correct? Correct. You didn't see her swaying? Correct. She was not unbalanced? No. She was not slurring her words? No. She was not talking gibberish? No. She was engaging in normal conversation? Yes. And she held the conversation perfectly fine? Yes. She appeared to be under control, correct? Yes. She was affectionate with John that night? Yes. Oh. I didn't come in contact with them like that. Well, the two of them certainly were not arguing. No, not that I saw. You didn't see any tension between them, correct? No. And, I mean, given your you know, family's connection to law enforcement, um, you would not knowingly let someone drive a car if they were under the influence, correct? Objection. Um, everyone appeared to be having a good time that night, correct? Yes. And that included John and Karen from what you could see, correct? For the 10 minutes, I, 10, 15 minutes I was there, yes. Okay. Now, after you left the waterfall, it's fair to say that um, you didn't know precisely where your son Colin was that night, correct? I knew where he was. Where was it? 
He was at his friend Michael Leonetti's. He left Michael Leonetti's to stop to say happy birthday to my nephew Brian at 34 Fairview Road. Oh, and you learned that from him, correct? Yes. All right. So you had learned that uh, Colin was at 34 Fairview on January 29th of 2022, correct? January 28th. The Fred. So is it your testimony that you know that Colin left on Friday night as opposed to after midnight on January 29th? I don't, I don't understand what you're asking. Just, what just occurred is I asked you uh, whether you knew that your son Colin was at your sister-in-law, Nicole's, and your brother-in-law, Brian Albert's house on January 29th. And you just correct. I'm sorry. It was after, I'm sorry. It was after midnight. Okay. So that's, I got confused. Yeah, I apologize. Not a problem. Uh, so the answer to my question is you, you learned that he was there on January 29th, correct? Yes, after midnight. And you now know that that is the same house outside which John O'Keefe was found dead the next, that morning, correct? Yes, I do. Um, and one last question. You uh, were interviewed by Trooper Proctor, and it's fair to say you never told him that Colin was there that night, correct? I don't recall my interview. I have no further questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Riley. Just briefly, on. Good morning, Ms. Allen. Good morning. Now, with reference to, uh, you were asking a question about 67 calls over a period from January, or sorry, February to September, correct? Correct. That's about seven months, is that right? Yes. And roughly about 210 days or so? Yes. Um, do you have other friends uh, besides Ms. Brocker? Yes. And uh, versus uh, some of your other friends, as far as those phone calls, 67 times over 210 days, is that more so, less so, or on average with... Uh, less so. Less so. And at no point in time did you speak to Ms. Proctor that you would call about this case or talk to the proctor outside of that interview? Correct. In the interview that you had with the proctor, there was another trooper present, correct? Yes. And you would just ask some questions about meeting with some other troopers uh, this year in 2024, correct? Correct. Okay. Fair to say none of those troopers was a trooper proctor, correct? Correct. And also wasn't the trooper that was with trooper proctor when you spoke to him? Correct. And they asked you uh, questions. You had at least two interviews with them. Is that correct? Correct. And you voluntarily went to those interviews? Yes. You answered their questions? Yes. They asked for your phone? Yes. When I was sitting there, they looked at my phone. Yes. So they asked for your phone. You provided your phone. Yes. Voluntarily, nobody threatened you with a search warrant or anything like that? No. You were asked some questions about timing, and I promise there's, there's no math uh, that I'm asking in this, but um, you've had to uh, walk outside when it's cold outside, correct? Yes. You tend to walk faster or slower when it's cold outside? Faster, me personally. When you went over to uh, your in-law's house, uh, on the morning of January 29th to drop off donuts for your nephew, uh, you weren't expecting to go inside, correct? Correct. You weren't expecting to be standing around talking to people about a friend of yours uh, potentially having died at that point. Uh, on no, I, no. Nothing further. May we approach? Okay. <clears throat> you're actually, um, your, your testimony was out there. Thank you. All right, so but at, let's let the jurors go first. 